So welcome to this uh, Nordic uh, Partner Webinar. This time we have uh, with us uh, Nimblelink. Nimblelink is a leader in simplifying cellular IoT product development. And in this webinar, we will explain how to get your cellular IoT products to market faster with the Skywire Nano. Um, today's speakers, so my name is uh, Petter Myhre and I work for Norex Semiconductor. I'm uh, head of the product uh, marketing uh, team uh, here at Nordic. I'm not going to talk too much about myself today, so I just uh, will I'll let uh, Brandon introduce himself. Thanks, Peter. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like talking about myself a whole lot either, but uh, my name is Brandon. I am from Nimblelink. Uh, I'm with our marketing group on the technical side, and I make a series of uh, web videos called From the Workshop. So if you like learning about cellular and specifically cellular technologies with regard to the IoT industry, then you'll probably enjoy from the workshop. So uh, check us out on YouTube. But as far as me, I've uh, got a couple decades of experience in the cellular industry, helping engineers and developers sort of navigate all of the, uh, the hurdles and the complexities of how to utilize cellular and how to incorporate that into IoT solutions. That's me. Thanks, Brandon. And then uh, just quickly, some practicalities about this uh, webinar. Uh, it will last for uh, approximately 50 to 60 minutes. Uh, we are encourage you to ask questions. Please do that uh, at the top of the right uh, sidebar. All questions uh, will be treated uh, anonymously, uh, but please try to keep them uh, relevant to the topic in this uh, webinar. And uh, we will answer them uh, towards the end. Then I just also want to mention that the chat is not anonymous, uh, and please do not use uh, that for questions. And uh, if you have more questions uh, or um, your questions uh, didn't get the, the answer that you wanted, uh, you can uh, reach out to us on, uh, on DevZone for Nordic related questions, or you can send an email to work workshop at nimblelink.com to reach out to Nimblelink. And then uh, in the end, I want to mention that the recording of the webinar will be available together with the presentation at uh, webinars.nordicsemi.com. Excellent. Well, thank you for uh, for the introduction here and uh, and for kind of kicking things off. Um, I thought it would make sense to start off first of all by just kind of addressing who Nimblelink is uh, for those of you who have not heard of us before, uh, so you kind of understand where we're coming from when we talk about cellular and we talk about IoT and bringing those two together and really kind of simplifying that whole process. Um, but first off, uh, Nimblelink, and you've probably heard this from other companies as well, we are a rapid IoT solutions company. Uh, so easy to say and harder to back up. Uh, in the case of Nimblelink, we really, really mean rapid. And we, we do a lot of things to really kind of take what is the most complex, the most difficult parts of deploying any typical IoT solution and try to uh, eliminate the hardest parts of it. Um, quite frankly, in most cases, that is the cellular uh, radio system that you are integrating into your custom IoT device. And uh, so we really just tackle that head on by, uh, first of all, as you can see on the, on the slide here, there are a couple different members of the Skywire product family. Uh, there's the traditional Skywire, which is the one on top there. And then there's the Skywire Nano, which is the one on the bottom. We're gonna be focused on quite a bit here today. But basically, these are devices that are meant to simplify the entire process of designing in and adding cellular connectivity to your device. And we'll talk about exactly how that is accomplished here shortly, but that's really what we're after. By using that and combining it with a lot of the additional uh, support information and services that we offer, uh, it's, it's very practical to create, go from a napkin sketch to a fully deployed solution. In fact, we've had customers do it in a period of three months uh, in some cases. So uh, we do mean rapid. You can very, very quickly get a product to market. Uh, and yes, we, uh, we make those videos I talked about earlier, the From the Workshop videos. Um, so we, we like to educate uh, the industry and, and our audience as much as possible. And uh, we are also crazy about being friendly to developers. 
or if you decide to interpret that statement a different way, we are also friendly to crazy developers. So either way works. Uh, this is just kind of a quick snapshot of, of the three different types of services and products that we offer. Uh, so on the far left here are the embedded solutions. Again, this is where we're going to spend most of our time here today, talking about uh, the Skywire product family, and most notably the newest member of the Skywire product family, the Skywire Nano. Uh, and then on the far right, we've got the asset management solutions, uh, again, focusing on trying to uh, allow customers to bring a solution to market much, much faster. Uh, we decided to kind of tackle this whole idea of tracking assets with low power cellular enabled devices. And so we've created a, a whole family of asset tracking devices, as well as the back end systems to go with them. And rather than just selling them as a NimbleLink asset tracking solution, we offer these as a white label solution. So again, eliminate the complexities, make it easier. You put your label on our devices and offer it as your solution. So it is a much, much faster way to get a fully featured solution to market that way. Uh, so create your own modem or create your own devices with our embedded modems or white label our asset tracking solutions. Either way, you can get something to market very, very quickly. Tying all of that together is our services bucket. And in the services side, we have everything from simply providing cellular service. Uh, so if you just need to activate your devices, we have cellular services that we can provide for that. Uh, we also do things such as custom design. So uh, for customers who have a large volume and they need to get something done very, very quickly, uh, we can help rapidly develop a, a product or uh, rapidly develop a hardware uh, in some cases to make all of that work. And of course, make sure that everything works together. So um, those are sort of the, the three different categories of what we offer. And again, this is where we're coming from when we talk about simplifying the development of IoT devices with the Skywire Nano. OK, so I talked about this idea that uh, cellular is difficult and it needs to be simplified. But why is it so hard in the first place? What makes cellular development so difficult? Well, before we can address why it's so hard, there's a little bit of background information you need to understand. Um, if it is indeed so difficult, why bother doing it? Why bother utilizing a cellular radio if doing so is, is, a, is a complex, difficult, time-consuming thing to, to uh, take on? Well, there are a few things that I think are kind of the key headlines for why we utilize cellular so much. Um, the first of those is this idea of direct connectivity. And with direct connectivity, what I'm referring to here is the idea that your individual IoT device has its own IP address. So it can literally just talk directly to the endpoint, tech, talk to the cloud, talk to your backend uh, system, whatever that may be. So by having this direct connectivity, you don't have to have a situation where uh, maybe you've got you know, a Wi-Fi system that all talks into a central access point. That central access point then is the gateway to, uh, to, the, to the backend system, to the internet. Uh, but the individual devices themselves are not talking directly through the internet to your, to your backend system. They have to go through that gateway device, uh, which means they need to be paired with that device or, uh, or tied into it in some way. Uh, if that device goes down, uh, you're going to have a single point of failure for multiple devices that are all you know, working through that one single device. Um, you know, there's, there's complexities of in the future, if that access point changes, uh, maybe the hardware goes bad and needs to be replaced, or uh, the, the router got hacked and you need to change the password. Now you have to set all of those devices all up again, uh, pair each one of them all up again. So again, whether it's Wi-Fi, whether we're talking about you know Bluetooth or, or Zigbee or LoRa or any of those types of systems, um, having direct connectivity is always preferable to having to go through a concentrator or a gateway type of, of box. Um, so you get that with cellular connectivity. Uh, the other thing is the fact that these are all pre-configured, which means in the uh, production instance where you are manufacturing these units in a factory, uh, say on an assembly line, with a cellular device, once that device gets to the end of the assembly line, 
you can power it up, you can activate it, you can send some test data, you can send a test text message if you want to. Basically, you make sure that the device is indeed working. Uh, then you turn it back off again, put it in a box, set it on a shelf until it's time to deploy it. Then when you deploy it, you simply put the device in the field or, or install it wherever you're going to put it and turn it on. The device is already configured. It's already active. It's already going to find a cellular network and send the data through that cellular network. There's, there's no need to get it started, get it paired with an access point. There's nothing to do, uh, which means that deployment becomes very, very simple. Send the device where it's gonna go, turn it on and it's gonna start acting uh, as it's supposed to from there. Um, part of the reason it can do that is because there is a managed network. Most IoT device uh, developers or uh, IoT solutions developers are not also interested in becoming network managers. Uh, you wanna deploy an IoT solution. You don't necessarily wanna deploy an IoT solution and also deploy a network and also manage that network and make sure that the network is updated and the network is secure and the network is optimized uh, for coverage and that's those types of things. With a cellular network, there's already a team of people who are doing that and, uh, and that is what you are gaining access to. So let them handle managing a network, you simply get to use it and, uh, and then you get the best of both worlds. And the last point that I wanna make on why we even bother with cellular is uh, the concept of ubiquity. The, the, the fact that um, there are other types of network offerings out there. Uh, you may have heard of names like uh, LoRaWAN and Sigfox and uh, you know different types of networks like those. Um, the problem is, uh, and some of those are very, very good technologies, but the problem is that they never really got full coverage. They never got uh, uh, the type of ubiquity that cellular has achieved. And so it's hard to compete when you've got such ubiquitous coverage. You've got global coverage for cellular. Um, there are cellular radio towers in places where there aren't wire lines. They, they don't even exist. So, um, you know, cellular is, is really just about everywhere. You don't really want to have to worry about whether there's going to be coverage when you deploy a solution. You just simply want to deploy it. Uh, and in this case, that's one of the, the strong points for cellular as well. Okay, so with that being said, now we know why we want to deploy cellular. So what makes cellular so hard? Why is it so complex? Um, well, the first thing is the, the simple RF engineering of trying to create a custom board, a custom device, custom PCB, um, and having to tackle the RF engineering uh, it, to, to create that device. Um, when you're talking about a cellular device, you're now talking about a device that has to um, make sure that it doesn't uh, cause interference or uh, that the antennas are going to work properly, um, that you are impedance matching the traces on your board, that you are not uh, you know, producing harmonics or echoes within the circuitry that are going to detune your antenna or whatever the case may be. RF engineering is black magic. <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy and it requires very specialized knowledge. Um, so if, if you can reduce the RF engineering as much as possible, that would be great, but you know, uh, it's, it's still there. Um, there are also constant changes in the cellular industry. So uh, carriers are changing the, the, the bands that they use. They are changing the technologies that they offer. You know, 5G right now is, is all the, 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 the rage, but at the same time, uh, 4G is uh, the, the most viable technology when it comes to IoT devices. Um, so with all the buzz about 5G, why are we still in 4G? Is 4G not as good as 5G? Um, you know, which, which frequency should I use? Uh, there's TDD and FDD. You know, all these things are constantly changing and uh, you have to kind of keep up with it when it comes to cellular. Uh, cellular devices are also WAN radios, which means that um, they tend to be very, very high power when they're communicating with a tower miles away. Uh, that does require a fair amount of power in your device. So if you're trying to create a low power system, that can be quite difficult. Um, and then there is this underlying issue with costs. The cost of the hardware tends to be high. Uh, the ongoing costs 
uh, which don't exist in a lot of other systems, um, can be a bit of a problem when it comes to cellular devices as well. You have to pay a monthly fee for continued access to those cellular networks. Uh, and then lastly, there is this concept of certifications. Certifications are not new to cellular. They're not unique to cellular, but there are some certifications which are specific to the cellular industry. Uh, some of those are uh, uh, regulatory bodies, uh, things like PTCRB here in North America. Um, and then there are individual carrier certifications, you know, Verizon, AT&T, uh, TELUS, uh, all the you know, individual carriers then want to add additional certifications, additional testing on top of the overarching PTCRB type of certifications. Uh, so that's a lot of testing uh, and it's not always easy to pass those tests. So that can be time consuming and costly as well. So this is why cellular is, is complex, but I don't want to scare you off. <laughs> so um, there, there's just a little bit more information you need to understand. And then we're going to tell you exactly how all of this can be made simpler and easier, which is, again, what we're talking about today. Uh, so fundamentally, there are three different types of radios. And there's first the chipset. And the chipset is typically the lowest level radio. Um, so this is the basic chip that is uh, responsible for uh, handling some of the protocol stuff for the individual 3GPP technologies that you're using, whether it's NB-IoT or LTEM or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, this is the part that actually handles the, the functionality of the cellular system. A chipset is created, then typically a chipset is uh, tested and is approved and certified for use on a cellular network. But you can't just take a chipset and put it down on your board and deploy. Uh, that chipset level is just the first level in a three level process to gain full access, full end device certification for your device so that you can actually activate it and deploy it. So typically once that chipset is approved, that chipset is then incorporated into a module. The module is uh, a basically a little kit that includes not only the chipset, but also an applications processor, maybe a GPS radio, uh, some power management, and a bunch of software thrown on top to help make everything work together. Uh, this is a much easier uh, uh, radio system to utilize and a much easier radio system to integrate into your device. Um, but it's still, once the module is created and it's tested and it's approved, it's still not fully end device certified. So you can have a fully certified module, you know, let's say it's a, a Verizon certified module. That doesn't mean you can take that Verizon certified module, put it on your board and activate it. There's still that final level of certification that has to happen. So once that module receives module level approval, we then incorporate the module into an end device. And this is the final level. So once the final end device certification is completed, you can then take that device, activate it with the carrier and deploy it. Um, so basically you've got the chipset level. Once the chipset is approved, it's incorporated into a module. Once the module is approved, it's then incorporated into an end device. In our case, you can see our Skywire Nano there at the top. Um, we actually incorporate that approved module into our Skywire Nano. We then take the Skywire Nano through the full end device certification itself. So you can then simply put the Skywire Nano into your device and deploy. There's no additional testing, no additional certification because that final category of certifications has been completed. You also have the option of simply taking the module, putting that into your end device, taking your end device through that certification process. Um, either way, you end up with a fully end device approved uh, device that you can simply deploy and activate. So this is what the process looks like. I just wanted to throw this out there so that we can um, refer to this as we go through the rest of the discussion. Okay, so all of that said, so uh, we know why we wanna do cellular. Uh, we know why cellular is, is complex and difficult, and hopefully you're not too scared off by, uh, by that process. Um, so how can we actually make all of this easier? And basically, this is sort of my, uh, what, I, what I would see as a wish list for an engineer who's approaching this. Uh, the first thing is simply reduce the RF engineering requirements. I may not have an RF engineer on staff. 
um, or I've got one and that one person is overworked. <laughs> but uh, you know, in either case, if we can reduce the RF engineering requirements, um, that's gonna make designing a custom board a lot easier. Um, also, obviously, if there are uh, easy, simple to use development kits, that would be great because now I can rapidly proof of concept or prototype what I'm trying to do. Um, maybe I use that to gain uh, leadership approval on the whole system. Uh, if I could then get reference designs for that dev kit or for, for a design that I can use to incorporate the radio, that would be great. Obviously clear documentation for everything. If we can sort of just take out that whole certification thing and just not have to worry about that, man, that would make things go faster and be a lot easier. Uh, and oh yeah, also, <laughs> could, could we possibly make it a little bit cheaper? That would be great. Uh, so this is sort of our wish list. And obviously I bring this up because we have done these things. But the very first thing I wanna do is turn it over to Petter to talk through uh, what the NRF 9160 module or SIP is. Um, and if we kind of refer back to this diagram here where we've got the chipset and the module, um, Nordic sort of rewrote the script on how you do things like this. And they've combined the chipset and the module into one uh, radio system and it has module level approval. So um, that is kind of uh, what Petter is gonna be talking about here shortly. Um, so I wanna turn it over to him to just give you an overview of what the NRF 9160 can do to simplify this whole process and provide you uh, a lot of features and, and uh, benefits in using that system. And then um, once we come back, I will then tell you how we took everything that Petra is going to cover and built upon it to make an even easier, even more simple system so that uh, you can take advantage of all those features. So Petra, over to you. Just to continue on the on what Brandon was talking about, the chipset and the module and uh, the end device. Uh, so yeah, we have uh, taken a bit special approach uh, where we make uh, the chipset, but also the module or uh, what we call the system in package. So in the middle on the, on the figure on the, on the right there, you can see the NRF91 SOC. And uh, we've integrated that, or that's the chipset that we have integrated into the SIP. Uh, together with the PMIC, passives and uh, crystals, and the R front end. Um, so it's a highly integrated solution. And uh, inside the, the chipset there, we have a dedicated application processor with memory, uh, and also a multi-mode LTM, MBOT, and a GPS uh, mode. And uh, this uh, GPS can actually do assisted GPS, uh, speeding up the time to the first uh, GPS uh, position fix or time to first fix. Um, so that's uh, also fairly interesting. And uh, this is uh, pre-certified for uh, global operation. So we have certified this on a module level in uh, in 17 LTE bands. And we also went out to uh, and certified with different uh, uh, operators like uh, Verizon and at and in the US, Bell in Canada, Deutsche Telekom and Vodafone in Europe, China Telecom in China, and and, and so on. Um, I also already mentions, mentioned the PMIC, passives and crystals, and we integrated all of this in a, in a very, very small package, uh, 10 times 16 times one uh, millimeter. And uh, the ones of you that know Nordic know that uh, we are all about uh, low power and uh, we built this from scratch with uh, low power in mind. Um, so uh, when we compare ourselves and see the other solutions in the market, we see that when it comes to low, pro low uh, on power consumption, uh, we, are the, we are the best in class. A few more details about uh, the application processor. Uh, so this is where you uh, put in uh, your application, where you build, uh, build, uh, put your code and uh, connect your sensors and do your things. Um, so we also have uh, a CPU in here, of course, uh, the 64 megahertz ARM Cortex M33. 
We also have uh, arm trusts on here so that you can do uh, trusted uh, execution. We have an arm crypto cell uh, for application layer security and uh, acceleration of uh, cryptographic uh, functions. We have one megabit of flash and 256K of RAM. We have four uh, instances where you can choose between uh, SBI master, slave, UART, two wire master, and slave. We also have some other uh, digital interfaces like PDM, IQS, PWM, and, and also an uh, 12-bit ADC. And in total, we have 32 GPIOs available. There is just a, a quick overview of uh, everything that is uh, inside. So I have touched upon a few of these already, um, but you can see the application processor and the modem with uh, the Cortex M33. And on the modem side, uh, you have also dedicated RAM flash and, uh, and the GPS. And um, you connect, you can connect, uh, you have to connect uh, some sort of SIM card. And this is powered and all communication between the between the NR916 and the SIM is uh, is handled automatically. And then uh, typically you need some kind of power source, a battery, and you connect your sensors. And uh, you need to have uh, one or more antenna. You can have uh, a dedicated uh, LTE antenna and a dedicated GPS antenna, or you can use one antenna for both of these. Then over to the software architecture. There again, you can see the, the application processor on top and the modem at the bottom. So uh, as, as, as I mentioned earlier, you, uh, the user application is uh, in the application processor. And this you can build using the NRF Connect SDK, which is the software development kit that we provide. Uh, in here, you can also find application layer protocols like CoAP, MQTT, HTTP, and uh, lightweight m 2 And then you communicate with the modem using a BSD Secure Socket API. And then we have something called the modem firmware, or the NRF9160 modem firmware, that we provide. And this contains the, the lower uh, LTE uh, uh, layers of the stack. L1, L2, and L3, and also the IPv4, IPv6, your TCP, UDP, TLS, and DTLS. And this we provide as a pre-compiled uh, binary that uh, you can uh, use. And a few words about the uh, NRF Connect SDK. Um, this um, integrates the, the Zephyr Arcos. So you might have heard about that. It's uh, publicly hosted on, on GitHub and uh, offers uh, version control management with uh, Git. The IDE we use is Segar Embedded Studio. And you here you, get, uh, you can use this for free when you develop with Nordic products. And we have a wide range of samples and applications uh, in the SDK so that you can uh, get started. The samples are more uh, simple code snippets that uh, do a certain functionality, while applications are more uh, complete. Um, are more complete, so you can have a we have an asset tracker applications uh, application where uh, you can have everything you need to build an asset tracker uh, product. Then I think it's back to you, uh, Brandon. Excellent. Yes, thank you very much for walking us through all that. That is a lot. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot going on uh, inside of this tiny, tiny little sip. Um, and I'm going to show here on the camera just real quick exactly what we're talking about when we talk about the NRF 9160. That's the, the silver rectangle there. And then the Skywire Nano, which is barely bigger than that. Uh, you can see how small it really is. The picture is deceptively large on the slide. <laughs> so I just want to kind of show real quick exactly what we are talking about when we talk about the Skywire Nano. This is a very, very tiny little device. Um, and it's only able to be that way because of the tiny little package that the NRF9160 SIP is in. 
Um, so this is the device we're gonna be referring to here. So let's talk about how we can take all of those features, all of that functionality that Petra just walked us through on the 9160 and make it more accessible, make it easier to integrate. And, and bottom line is it, we're gonna be talking about the Skywire Nano. So on the hardware side of things, uh, we've done quite a few things, as you might have guessed from our wish list. We uh, made the RF engineering a lot easier by isolating the RF path. So the RF path between the module and the individual antenna connectors, as you can sort of see in the picture here uh, with the Skywire Nano sitting in the middle of that dev kit, um, the RF path between the module and the antenna connectors is all contained within the Skywire Nano. So there's no need to route RF path or RF, RF circuitry through your design. So we kind of take that out of the list of things that you have to think about or deal with. Um, that's not to say you can't do anything wrong with the RF circuitry, um, but, uh, but the chances of you being able to uh, uh, interfere with that RF path are, are much uh, lower, much uh, greatly reduced. Um, and and Peter uh, sort of mentioned the idea of low power, and I wanna kind of really highlight how low power we're talking about. Um, with the Skywire Nano, I mean, we're talking about uh, 2.4 microamps in its low power mode. So uh, incredibly, incredibly low power operation. Even in the higher operation uh, uh, modes, it's still in the, in the tens of microamps, um, or sorry, milliamps for uh, operation. So we are talking about a very, very low power system. In fact, with this dev kit right here, this is the first time we've actually been able to run the entire dev kit, including the modem, off of a simple USB connection. So the whole thing is powered just by normal USB, USB power. Um, and that is a testament to how low power this whole system can be. We've had other LTEM modems and dev kits, and you have to provide a separate power adapter to make them work. And uh, this is the first time the whole thing can just simply be run off of the five volt USB power. So that's pretty cool. Um, the way that this works with the flexible antenna connectors here uh, means that you can simply add whatever antenna you want. You can bring your own antenna. So if you need a small internal antenna or a very large external antenna, you simply adapt to those U.FL antenna connectors on the board. And then, of course, we've got that that dev kit that you see right there. Um, and uh, one of the cool things about this is that to make the hardware design easy, that dev kit is not just simply something you use to proof of concept and prototype your application, but um, it's got Grove connectors on it so you can at attach sensors. It's got a built-in button and tricolor LED and accelerometer. So you can actually use the dev kit all on its own. Um, and then you run your application on the Skywire Nano and it basically becomes a full testing platform. But beyond that, that entire dev kit is completely open on our public website. Uh, so you can go there right now. Um, if you go out to our public website, you will find all of the design files for that dev kit. Uh, so you will find not only the, the uh, you know, schematics, but the Gerbers, the actual bomb for the parts that were used in the creation of this, uh, of this uh, dev kit. Um, and all of the editable design files. So you can basically come along and just simply take the part of the dev kit that uh, accommodates the connector, the hardware connector for the Skywire Nano and copy and paste it into your design and then add in whatever application specific circuitry you need for your board and you're done. So you don't have to recreate everything just based on the documentation. You can literally take our design that we've already created, that we it is a known good working design, and transplant it into your uh, circuitry, and off you go. Very, very quick, very simple, very easy to do on the hardware side. On the software side, we're basically taking everything that, that Nordic has done with the NRF 9160, and we are offering it in a more accessible way through the Skywire Nano's interface. Um, so we offer the Skywire Nano kind of in two different modes of operation. The first is the client mode. So those of you who are familiar with the traditional Skywire modem, this is kind of the only option for those traditional Skywire modems where um, you are interfacing with the modem via a UART and using AT commands. 
Um, the other option though, which I think is a little bit more exciting is the standalone mode. And standalone mode is where the Nano is your, uh, your processor. You use the applications processor built in and the Zephyr RTOS uh, that Petter walked us through earlier to actually run your application directly on the Nano itself. Use the 31 GPIO, uh, you know, use all of the capabilities that it's got to run your application, plug your sensors into it, provide it power, provide it antennas, and off you go. Um, all of the support for the Nordic peripheral drivers is still baked in. The Nordic uh, NRF, 90, or NRF uh, SDK is all fully supported here. Um, so we're basically just offering everything that, that Nordic did, plus we're adding some additional coding in there to allow for full photo functionality, not just for the module's own firmware and updating that in the field, but actually updating your own application code that's running on the uh, Skywire Nano as well. So full photo functionality for all of that exists within the Skywire Nano, and that's, that's uh, um, some code that we actually added, as well as some other things to kind of help with certifications. Um, of course, everything is thoroughly documented, lots of application notes for how to do different things like connecting into AWS, IoT, et cetera. Um, and the Skywire Nano uh, carries full device certification, that end device level certification as well. So you can pretty much skip uh, over all of the cellular specific device certification steps. Um, we're also very excited, <laughs> this is brand new. We are offering the Skywire Nano with uh, basically, so that with the ability that you don't actually have to pay for monthly data fees. We talked earlier about how you have to pay every single month for cellular data service. In this case, we are eliminating that with the Skywire Nano prepaid data bundle. And essentially you pay one, one single price, one, one time, uh, $59. And that's going to get you not only the Skywire Nano, but it's also going to get you 500 megabytes of data, which is good for 10 years. So if you just want to deploy a solution, you don't want to have to have your customers maybe pay you on a monthly basis to cover the cellular service costs, uh, or you just want to deploy devices and know that they're going to be good out in the field for a period of 10 years. Um, and oh, by the way, also, if you happen to run out of that 500 megabytes or the time expires on your 10 years, you can then simply top up you know, refill that 500 megabytes and get another 10 years with 20 bucks. So this is a, this is a pretty big deal. We're pretty excited about this because it really eliminates one of the big hassles, one of the big hurdles to um, offering cellular service, which is you have to pay on a monthly basis. Well, now you don't. So this is a, a single one-time buy, $59 gets you 500 megabytes of data, good for up to 10 years at a time. It also includes 250 text messages if you're interested in that. So there's that. Okay, um, I know there are a lot of specs nerds out there like me, and so this slide is for you. Basically, here's a bunch of uh, specs on the Skywire Nano. Um, I also wanna draw your attention to the picture here. This is the connector for the Skywire Nano. The cool thing about that is that when you are designing your board and you're designing your custom IoT device, you're not actually designing in a full radio. Essentially, you're just uh, designing in the mating connector for the Skywire Nano. So uh, that makes, again, the design of trying to incorporate a cellular IoT radio uh, into your device a lot easier because, again, you're not having to worry about the full radio system. You simply have to accommodate that connector in your design then you can add the radio later when you add the Skywire Nano. So that's a little bit of information about that. I thought I'd walk you through a couple of examples here before we get to the Q&A. Um, one of these, and this is kind of cheating because this is one of our, our own asset tracker devices here, but um, asset tracking is something a lot of people really you know, easily understand. And the Skywire Nano is particularly well suited to serve as an asset tracker. Uh, this device here basically just needs to be very small. It needs to be very lightweight. Uh, you know, if we can eliminate any additional uh, components by maybe not having an additional processor, 
Um, maybe we can, uh, you know, make this whole device a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller, or maybe give it better battery life. Uh, we're going to use LTEM for this device, and uh, because it is going to be mobile, it is a an asset tracker. So when it moves, we need to be able to continue to communicate with it, um, and it needs to be global. We want to deploy this thing anywhere uh, we we want to track an asset, and so um, basically we also. Uh, want to not have to uh, pay on a monthly basis for cellular radio service either. In this case, obviously the Skywire Nano with the bundled data service makes perfect sense. We can uh, incorporate that radio in, run our, the application code for the asset tracker directly on it, um, get incredible battery life due to the low power nature of the NRF9160 that's used in the Skywire Nano. Uh, and then we don't have to pay for a monthly data service on top of all of that. So it's a pretty easy win there. Very, very quick time to market as well. Here's another quick example for you. Um, so this is a, a system that actually allows for the monitoring of uh, worker safety conditions. So uh, it's checking for uh, slips and falls. It's checking for uh, noise levels. It's checking for um, heat and, and, and cold. Uh, and just basically making sure that factory workers are safe. If they, if something does happen, it will automatically report those incidents back to uh, to, to the backend system. Um, so basically, this system right now would operate on a short-range radio system between the individual armband and a central gateway device, and then that central gateway device would be responsible for communicating to the backend. So if something happens with the gateway, if uh, the network that it's attached to goes down for some reason. Uh, if a worker gets out of range of that shortwave radio system, um, you know, all of those are issues that the current system has. With a Skywire Nano, you can put that radio directly into the armband itself. Each armband would then have a direct communication path to the backend system, uh, eliminating any single point of failure with the gateway and uh, ensuring that wherever that worker goes, um, their band remains connected. If they do slip and fall, somebody will know about it right away and, uh, and they can provide uh, assistance to them or the device will automatically file the you know, safety report, that kind of thing. Um, so obviously this is one of those great scenarios where you need something small, you need something lightweight, you need something with good battery life, you need something with good connectivity and the Skywire Nano would be a perfect fit for something like this as well. So just a couple scenarios I wanted to throw out there to uh, provide a little context for um, what the Skywire Nano is capable of doing. And with that, I think I am pretty much out of my time, but I wanted to uh, at least give you a couple things here that you could uh, reach out to. One is the website for the Skywire Nano. So if you wanna learn more, you can use that uh, short URL right there and go to the Skywire Nano's website. You can also email us to workshop at nimblelink.com and we're happy to answer any questions you may have and get back to you um, uh, that way.